Well, good morning, everyone. Kay here on my Tennessee homestead. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, we're going to go over all of the varieties of winter squash that I grew this year, what worked and what didn't, and how I'm storing them. So stay tuned. So I got started planting the side garden a little bit late this year, and I did plant about 12 mounds of winter squash and watermelon. And out of all of the varieties, which were Chinese tropical pumpkin, Seminole pumpkin, butternut, spaghetti squash, and the Guatemalan blue heirloom squash. Was there another one? Yeah, that was it. I had great success with all but two of those varieties. And I'll show you one example of the Chinese tropical pumpkin. It's so cute, but I only got one and it didn't cure quite right. But if they're not appropriate for curing a long time, you can still use them and cook them now. So that's what I'm going to do. I harvested after the first frost, these four winter squash here. They're are three butternut and one was a Seminole. Some were still a little bit green and some are starting to go bad on one end. So I'm going to salvage everything that I can here and I'm going to bake chunks in the oven and then I'm going to freeze that into freezer bags. So I will have that ready for casserole or muffins or pies or whatever during the winter. You know, it can be a little intimidating to cut into a hard winter squash. It is for me, it may be for you too. And sometimes I just start with a really sharp end and, and get myself a cut going like that. Actually, this is not as hard as they can be because it did not finish the curing process. So it's it's not too bad. Let me just see what the inside looks like. Now, if I had chickens, I would just cut this into chunks and give it to the chickens, but I don't, so let's see if it's gonna be good, good to salvage. Actually, I think I'll just eliminate this whole piece. It smells good. It's a little soft though. On um, this side is a little soft. And I'm just a little concerned about it. I do have so many good ones. I might just scrap this one. I mean, that looks great. but it's really juicy and I've never seen so much juice coming out of a squash before. So I think I'm going to pass on this one. I just wanted to see if anything was salvageable and I think I answered my question. Uh, this one has a dark spot on it, but it's not seeping or anything. Wow, that was a lot of juice coming out of that. Now I know that they say you should just have sharp knives, but <laughs> I am afraid if I get a really, really, really sharp knife, then I'll cut my finger off and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so uh, this is the side that's bad, but actually this all looks really good too. I could probably trim off even more and save it and cook it. Now, this looks kind of nasty, so I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> and I'm going to put that over here, but this one looks good, and I'm going to go ahead and cook this and either use it right away or put it in the freezer. 
Uh, let's see. Well, you know how to scoop out the seeds. I won't be saving seeds from this particular one. I'm going to save seeds from some of the ones I have upstairs. Now, I was really concerned about where I was going to store my winter squash because to properly cure winter squash, as you probably know by now because it's already November, is you, you put them in a warm space. First of all, you harvest them when the, the vine is dry. And, you, and sometimes they can just cure in the, in the garden because my new friend Tom Anderson, he gave me a beautiful squash and he said he just lets them cure in the garden. But I got a late start and so I had five beautiful squash developing uh, when we had our first freeze. And we had our first freeze about two weeks before typical. So I wasn't quite prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> okay, I'll probably just cut it into, I kind of like to cut it into uh, pieces that I think will cook about the same amount of time. So these pieces are ready to go into the oven and all of this is going in the compost. Okay, so those are the, the two in question. And I had one spaghetti squash that started to rot upstairs. I was saying that you want to, when you bring your squash in to cure, you want them to be at a warmer temperature, 70 to 75 to 80 degrees uh, for a short amount of time and then and then put them in 45 to 55 degrees cool space. Like, of course, a root cellar is perfect, but I don't have one. And so I kept thinking, where can I store these? Because you don't want to store them outside anywhere that bugs or anything can get to them. And I finally figured out I have a closet that is sort of, it sits out into the attic and it doesn't have, the heat doesn't go in there, so it is quite a bit cooler than the rooms upstairs. Now, because I don't go upstairs very much, I keep the, and to, and to save money, I keep the temperature set about 65 degrees upstairs, um, between 60 and 65, and then I turn it up when I go up uh, to be up there. So it stays maybe five to 10 degrees cooler in this closet. So let's go take a look. Okay, you can't see my face. <laughs> Unless I'm on this side. Okay, so this is where I decided to store my squash. And it says I brought my nursery thermometer up here has the humidity and the temperature, and the humidity is 55, which is in a normal range, and the temperature is 60. So that's about as good as I can do and keep it in the house. Now let me just go through the varieties. These are Seminole. They're all small, but this is like a perfect size for me. Seminole were seeds that I purchased probably three or four years ago, and the butternut squash, these seeds were given to me by Daryl. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten that's stored beautifully. These are really hard as a rock. <laughs> Here's the Chinese tropical pumpkin, which is just lovely. And of course, it should be bigger. But now I notice it's starting to get a soft spot down here. So I'm going to have to take this down and cook that right away and store it or eat it. These are the... Guatemalan blue squash and I understand that there's a lot of pink involved so there's also a pink banana squash and I don't know if it somehow crossed or what but these seeds were given to me in 2017 by my friend Glenda 
she brought me one of these. It was probably this size, but it was all bluish green like this color. And we cooked it, or I cooked it, and I saved the seeds, and I'd had them for, you know, let's see, four years now. And I, they did really well. This is, this one is 16 and a half pounds. <laughs> and this one is, hang on, 12 and a half pounds. And they get smaller from there. And then I have the butternut squash. These seeds were given to me too, and I have 10 of these, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight of these. I have eight of these, and these all stored beautifully. I only had one that I must have picked it too early and it rotted. Now this one is gonna have to be cooked too. It did not, it did not cure the way the others did, so I'm gonna take these down. This one looks good, but it looks, I mean, it looks, you know, it's really hard and nothing's happening to it, but it did get some kind of a, a scab from the garden. And when I cook this one, it's probably going to be that one I'll do first. So there you have it. We'll take this back down to the nursery. And now we know how things are going up here. Oh, one more thing. I forgot the kusha. Hang on. Okay, so kusha is a southern heirloom, and when it's growing, it's green and white striped, and it's absolutely gorgeous. You know, I use that word a lot. But this, this one is seeping, and there's got a bad spot on the bottom, so I am going to have to salvage what I can out of this. This is, the kusha is supposed to be great in pies, and so I'm going to cook this, what I can salvage from it, and and make a pie and I'll do that in a separate video because I can't wait to try that. I haven't, I've never done that. I've heard it's supposed to be wonderful but I just haven't had an opportunity to do that so I will. You want airflow between your winter squash when you're storing them. They have plenty of air here. This is a louvered door and the air gets in also from the attic. But there are the beautiful butternuts. And I would say the butternuts and the Guatemalan squash were the most successful. Although I love these little Seminoles. They're so cute. Love them. This one I harvested late. It's still got a little green on it, so I better keep my eye on this. Uh, I just put a little bit of wax paper, just kitchen wax paper down just in case something starts getting sticky. All right, so let's head downstairs. Okay, so now I'm going to put the pieces of squash that I'm salvaging into the oven at 350 degrees for about a half an hour and then I'll test it and I'll take it out when it's tender. Okay, let's give this a try. Mm. Mm. That's good and there's nothing on it, just completely plain. So I'm going to make some squash bread. Hey, thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here in Tennessee. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.